everyone, welcome back to the Not So Fit Couple podcast with your hosts, Lucy Davis. I'm Benjamin Holden. Do you want me to go? Yeah, okay. we love a little, I feel like Ben's intros are really good. He kind of does like a little summary of the week. Mm. I'll do try. Yeah, you know, it's interesting for this people. This is episode two of series three, which is now the video format as well. So again, if you listen to this on Apple or on Spotify, then you can tune in now on the youtube channel which is the not so fit couple, couple podcast, podcast channel well remember that <laughs> we've now got the the first version that we did if you watched it last week was basically what um cal referred to as the beta version so this week's episode is going to be a hell of a lot better there's a few more saucy angles um so there's nowhere to hide on this one basically but you've always got to try and test things i feel like for the very first one it was actually epic yeah, it was cool. Considering it was like the first video podcast we've ever done. And if you've not seen it, and if you're listening, definitely go over to the YouTube channel and have a little watch. Like, it's just, the, it's the whole section where I'm talking about poo. I was going to say, that was a great And it's literally just like poo. on my face. <laughs> the camera's, you got poo on your face? No, wow, the camera's so zoomed very in. very interesting, very quickly. The camera's so zoomed in on my face and I'm just completely, I've never been so normal talking about poo wasn't I? And I was just so great you've, about the whole you've, conversation. You've massively overcome that poo stigma because last week you wouldn't even say the words. I, yeah. I feel like we're crossing boundaries already. Thank you. Thank you but very much. Also, if you listen to this, we are midway through our five day free challenge event, which you, I don't know why I'm telling you because you now can no longer enter it. You but cannot. if you are in the event, great stuff. Well done. Continue. Like. <laughs> Stay motivated. And also, we are still running, I believe, when this goes up, the podcast competition where you can re- leave a review um, on... Is it, do you leave the review on Apple iTunes? Yeah. It's really difficult to figure out if you can actually leave them on Spotify. We always get asked, and I just don't know the answer. You can't. Carl's just confirmed you cannot, which is really annoying. However, I mean, I'm really sorry for Android users. Can they still leave a review um... on Apple Podcasts? We don't know. Either way, if you can, but the thing is please can, leave a review. What you can now do is, because we've got the podcast up on the YouTube channel, you can also leave a review oh, in yeah. the comments of the YouTube and we'll pick them up. Just make sure to put your Instagram um, name, tag in, sorry, and make sure that you like the video on YouTube and also subscribe to the channel because it's the right thing to do. Yeah, definitely. But I think we will also be getting the videos up on Spotify at some point as well, I believe. Yeah, we want to go for the um, sexy Joe Rogan vibe, don't we? Yeah, we do. He has like... Why are you he saying that's Joe Rogan's sexy, by the way? Like, I meant his, about, I meant his podcast. You're kicking off a podcast <laughs> on relationships and you start by calling other man sexy. No, so I mean, all, his, podca- from, yeah. his podcast setup is sexy, isn't it? Like, okay. it looks... I feel like you're trying to save yourself and it's not going <laughs> down very well. <laughs> it looks great. Anyway, as Ben just said, today's episode is anyway, all about... brief pause. It's, it's, wow, it's, actually, here's another thing for you, because Carl gave me this, this fact yesterday about Coca-Cola. <laughs> it came in the right time there, haven't I? So, Cal, give me this interesting fact. Cal's a, a, a knowledge on fountain of... General knowledge facts, or, random facts. Or useless facts, basically. <laughs> <laughs> but basically, when you open the can... It does, does sound different to the Monster can. Mm. I had the can of Coke yesterday, obviously not full fat. I'm not an absolute weirdo. Um, but when you open it, it has like a three-point click. So it goes... Tss, tss, tss. Apparently, Coca-Cola poured millions of pounds into that into marketing to get that three point click like bang on to make it as loud as possible so that when you open it whether you're on like a bus walking down the street in a supermarket like wherever you can hear that and it does make you turn around when you hear a click doesn't it i mean i don't really kind of drink coke, coke so i can't vouch for coca-cola i'm not i don't care whether you like <laughs> it or not i'm talking about the three point click and it's magic I thought it that, is was quite cool. Cool that is a very cool marketing tactic but i feel like more people should know that why don't they share that saying, this is our three-point click? Because you don't want people to... They want it to be like a subconscious thing that you hear that free click. And you 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 think about Coca-Cola. Yes. Okay, that is really clever. But away from the monster can and onto today's podcast okay. episode. Now, we've never spoke about this in the whole two years of the podcast, which is really weird <laughs> because we're called the no, not-so-fit you know couple. Do you know what we were talking about this the other day about what the podcast was going to be? Do you know what? Do you know what she said to me? I don't know why I'm saying she, but do you remember what you said to me. No. Do you think that people know we're a couple? Yeah, I'm. It's I'm called sorry. the not so fit couple yes, podcast. Yes, but some people might not think that they, if if they listen to this podcast out of like nowhere or don't know us from Instagram, they might just think because you can get a couple of people. You can get a couple. <laughs> a couple means two. 
It doesn't necessarily mean we are a couple. We're in a relationship. Okay. Do you know what I mean? I feel like, what well, if anyone doesn't know, myself and Ben are a couple in a relationship. Yeah. I'm glad you cleared that one And up we thought away. we would do today's episode on relationships. And we are definitely not saying we're relationship experts. However, we have definitely made our relationship pretty damn great. And considering we work together, we own a business together, we live together, it's actually questioned a lot of the time in terms of how do you not get sick of each other? How do you not get bored? How do you live together? How do you work together? Like all these questions. And we just thought, why don't we actually talk about what works in our relationship? Because it might be quite helpful. I've had quite a few of the questions on ask a question on Instagram as well. So I think it's it's obviously on people's mind. I think the reason why it's on people people's minds more at this this point in time is because obviously we're in lockdown. And I guess for a lot of people, it can be very lonely. It's, it, I feel lonely sometimes, mm. and I've got you all the time. So for people who are, who are on their own, they're probably like looking for more companionship from other people and looking for someone that they can share the loneliness with, I suppose. Yeah, definitely. And then also on the other end of the spectrum, people you might not have lived with someone before, and now you're with them 24-7 oh, yeah, in, yeah. in lockdown. Or the fact that if you're in a relationship you usually go to two separate offices to work, but now you're both working yeah, from home. And yeah, it can be really challenging. Obviously me and Ben have done it for Day one, so we three haven't years. We, we don't know any different. But for a lot of people, it is something that's really, really new. But the first thing is, and this is something Ben takes the piss out of all the time in terms of how we met. I did not. You did slide into I did DMs. not yes, did. slide into Ben's DMs. We're going to probably hear a very different story now, by the way. So just be prepared <laughs> for this story to be slightly stretched and warped. Genuinely, though, we didn't. I didn't slide into his DMs. We didn't even have each other on Instagram before we met. So we must have met now. It's like four years ago. Yeah, I think. Yeah, probably four I don't, years. I'm ago. not very good with dates. I can't really remember. It, it feels like long, it? feels like I've been with you for like ten years, but. We met at an event called FitCon, and that was in London. And it's basically like a, a, a crap body, body power. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't good, was yeah. it? Whatever it was. Yeah, it's and bit, it's only been one of them. Yeah, it was basically like the relentless of energy drinks for like fit, fitness expeditions. Yeah, it, it was just, just pretty poor. Didn't, it just didn't, didn't hit really off, did it? Really. Yeah. However, me and Ben met there. We were both working for the same company, and that was the first time I met him at the train station. In my head, I was like. <laughs> he's hunky <laughs> like who is this guy do, do you know what your vocabulary when it comes to descriptions is very mature isn't it like H- beyond mature like hunky and oh gosh <laughs> you, well, what's the other term that you say all the time and it sounds like when that's oh blimey has a, oh, bl- oh <laughs> who has said that term oh uh, blimey under the age of 50 me i do yeah. I don't know. It's just maybe it's because of Debs and Clive. That's just how I've been, how I've been brought up. My nan's really well spoken as well. And I sometimes I try and not let your accent rub off on me too much as well. Why? Because I, I have, I'm my own person. I have to let, I have to, you know, I have to let that stay with me. Okay. Me and Ben met at Fitcom and instantly we just got on really, really well. And it was kind of like, just like a strong friendship. Yeah, you you can say that, and we just had a lot in common. Obviously, we're both really into fitness at the time. I think I was first year of uni. Four, you you're fourteen. I was gonna say, I fucking hope definitely not. not. I was definitely not. I think I was twenty, nine, nineteen, yeah. twenty, something like that. And we'd met for the first time. We'd all worked together this whole weekend. We did a training session together. We just got on really well as mates. It wasn't really like a thing well we were both in relationships at the time as yeah well. we were both with other people and we just got on really well and it was like a super nice weekend but obviously like ben lives in liverpool and i lived in manchester at the time i was working i wasn't working i was at university in manchester so we didn't see each other after that i don't think for, well i was for working months. for i was working for the company to nutrition who you you were doing like ad hoc stuff for basically so i'd see you like every now and again maybe maybe, yeah. maybe every three or four months and we'll just kind of catch up then yeah we? just like we'd randomly see each other yeah and then it was my oh no i must have been second year of uni because i went into my third year 
And that's when you said to me, do you want to do your work placement as a, as a coach and as a personal yeah, trainer I set with up my me? Coach, coaching business. Yeah, because yeah. Ben has set up my coach and I needed to, and I was already into fitness completely. Then I set up like my Lucy Davis fit page. I already had my personal training qualifications. I was really loving fitness. And I knew I wanted to do it. And when Ben said, okay, for your 10 week work placement, do you want to work with me? I was like, yeah, for sure. And that was January of, I don't know, three years ago or something. Yeah. And then the rest is history. Yeah, pretty much. That was it. We started working together, didn't we? And then it slowly developed. Yeah. I I was getting more, at that point, already more and more consumed by... Me. (laughs) By work, is what I was going to say. I was literally spending like 14 hour days just in the office. Uh, Because I think that's what you do when you first start a business. And my previous relationship, I, I believe, kind of deteriorated because of that. So mm. I kind of got more and more attached to work and devoted myself to work. And then you came to work with us. And I think that's like a, a thing which was why we had a lot in common was because then we both came so committed to the business and to work. Yeah. that we spent more time together because of it. So I think that's one of the biggest questions that we often get of, isn't it? It's like, how do you work together? How do you own a business together and run a relationship? Because that does mean when we when you kind of cast an overview of it, I know we're not doing a lot of training together at the moment, but we live together, train together, run a business together, socialize together. Like we do a lot of stuff together. So I think people often wonder like, how do you spend so much time together and and run a business? Like how, how does it not, get, how do you not get on top of each other? I think is mo- the most common question. Yeah, well, this is the thing. And Obviously, me and Ben started off as friends and then got into a relationship. Which I think, by the way, sorry, just to interrupt, is a good place to start for a lot of people. I think it's a good place to start because you get to actually know the person on a friendship level as well yeah. in terms of like how they are around other people, their, how they are socially and things like that, and then what they speak to you about. And we were always like super open with each other as friends. So when it turned to a relationship, as Ben said, we were already working together as friends before being in a relationship so we've never not worked together we've all we've always worked in the same office when we had an office yeah we've always traveled together we've done a lot of things from the start so our situation might be a little bit different considering if you actually met someone at work like if you actually went to work and met someone there however we started like the my coach school and things together but ben obviously started the business my coach first and I think building a business together has taught us how to better better handle our non-business disagreements. So, for example, if we're making decisions about how to move forward with the business, you kind of have to think like ultra rationally instead of emotionally about a problem. And then you learn to handle disagreements in business. And it also translates to your personal relationship. And I think you, you kind of get into the habit of, having to compromise because you have to compromise in business me and ben own my coach together and we own the my coach school together so we have to compromise on business decisions and i just think it think it makes it easier for our our personal life but i think the thing is as well if you look at for example a business i believe two brains are better than one yeah you've got, sure. you got two people making decisions like and two knowledgeable people i like to think I'm knowledgeable. Anyway. knowledgeable not gonna lie. You're two knowledgeable people making decisions on business. It's it's only gonna better what you do. And you got like I've got you to um contend with sometimes, I've got you to challenge me, I've got you to question me, like with stuff where I just make decisions on my own. So in regards to business, I just believe it better's the business, it better's my decision making because you're there to challenge me and vice versa. And I think the biggest thing is obviously you to collectively together then although it can put pressure on a relationship we go through like the, the low points together of when like business has been shipped before oh, yeah and i think every business goes through that point and it's it's very stressful but then at least we had each other to kind of go through it with but then also you celebrate the successful p- p- periods together as well which is great yeah well that's the thing though we get to solve problems together we get to communicate with the whole of the my coach school team we watch each other exceed in different things so for example we do a lot of campaigns that are separate we both work with different companies and we always big up each other's wins because it means it means a lot to us because we know how that feels so we can kind of relate which is what we actually spoke about before the podcast and you can agree to disagree with me but i don't fully believe that opposites always that attract was a super nice point. 
you can continue. I just think it's a bit of a weird one. I think what you're relating to is that you're relating to like different people's interests. I, just because, for example, I know what you're referring to is like, for example, say I wasn't into fitness. Yeah. That, that is what I'm referring that, to. Yeah, that, I don't believe that's an opposite. I've got a okay. different interest. Okay. I don't think that means you're an opposite. Opposite but, to like when you're coming from two completely different viewpoints, standpoints, ethos on life. I think is 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 an opposite, and maybe even like, um, for example, what would be two opposites be? Um, I find it hard to think a, what they would be. What's that word? Like an for? introvert and an extrovert. Exactly, exactly the two terms. Do you think for. that would work though? Do you not think someone would be so overpowering in the relationship? But maybe that. I know how it works because my nan and granddad were like that as well. Like my granddad was a massive extrovert, mm. and my nan was a massive introvert, and she didn't particularly like talking that much, and he loved talking. Yeah, like she felt uncomfortable, but. However, when my granddad passed away, it was difficult for my nan because she was introverted and then she had to then do all talking. She kind of lost well, that. She, yeah, it almost voice. though. But then it almost made her come out more. So I, it's mm. difficult because I think there's there's good and bad points with being introverted and extroverted and a bit and being partners. That one does all of the talking and it relieves pressure from the other person, but then that person never really... Not that, the, not that the extrovert's a crutch for them, but... It, they do rely and depend on them so that when that person's not there, maybe in other social situations, how do they really socially interact with other people? Yeah, okay, I do get that then. If you're talking about maybe different personalities can come together, but I definitely think you have to have some of the same interests. I have never ever been with someone who wasn't into sport. I know what you mean, but what about if my interests were darts, okay? Oh, that's I was so that's passionate okay. about but the, the good thing is Still that I sport. could, I could, okay. I'm talking about someone, I couldn't okay. be with someone I who sits into... on the couch and plays COD all day. Do you know what I mean? Like that is so opposite to me. I'm up, I'm going, I'm active. I'm creating a, okay. a, an, a, a business. My hobby and interest is pottery. Like I love making pots. The the beauty of you both having different interests sometimes is that I could then take you to pottery class and something that you've never done before, something new for you to experience. Like, People who have those different interests mm. can then bring each other into those other situations that they maybe never would have got into before because they never would have had someone to, I suppose, lead them into it. Yeah, I do agree with that. Do you know what? I think I'm trying to get the words out that I couldn't be with someone who has no drive and no passion to actually get up and do something. If you're up and doing pottery and that's what you love to do, fucking great because you have a passion, you're doing something. I think what I'm trying to say is that I couldn't be with someone who just has no drive to do yeah, something what that's what i'm meaning by like the opposites because a, a great example of what you just said there is my mom and dad because my dad's always cycled for years and that got my mom into cycling and now they're both like avid amazing cyclists and they travel the world together cycling and yeah. my mom wouldn't have done that without dad i think those two like scenarios a good point of view because if you were someone who hasn't got the same interest, then you can drag the other person into it and like experience it and maybe then go on to enjoy it and carry on doing it, maybe like yeah. your mum and dad does. I think the thing that's interesting for me and you, because we did have the same interest, is that when you both have the same interest, I think it brings another element out, which is competitiveness, <laughs> isn't it? It is. I'm it, so com- Do you mean in terms of fitness, in terms of training? Yeah, well, because with any interest that you've got the same, it's it then becomes competition. And obviously that's good to have healthy competition. Because it drives you to want to become better all the time. You're challenging the other person. Um, you're contending with the other person. You're pushing the other person. Especially with, yeah, especially with some fitness stuff or strength stuff. Obviously, you're then trying to challenge yourself to push the stuff that I'm doing, which is... Not going to happen. <laughs> you're, you're still pushing yourself. Yeah. I think that the biggest thing that you want to try and get away from, and I do do it sometimes, is making comparisons i think that's human nature we make comparisons you yeah. don't want to compare yourself to each other because you're two different people yeah i i wouldn't compare myself to you i don't think i i would i think we're just very very different on a lot of levels okay I'm but gonna, also very the same i'm going to touch on a topic which is like kind of comes into this one i hadn't put it in, in in the podcast but we've spoke about it before which is jealousy, mm. and that comes in from comparisons. And the one thing that I want to first touch on is because this is something that I talked about. I had a therapist like all last year, and it was for the eating disorder. It wasn't for anything to do with life. But you do pick up certain points of your of your life within that because it's kind of like an overview of everything. Oh, yeah, pardon me. <laughs> and one of the things we touched 
touched on was jealousy. And the, the thing that she said to me was that a lot of people associate jealousy with a neg- as a negative term, mm-hmm. and it's not. We all get jealous. You just need to accept it. Yeah. Like, there's nothing wrong with being... I've been jealous of you before stuff. Yeah. And, it, like, there's, there's lots of stuff to be jealous about, but it's not a bad thing either. I'm not, act, I'm not acting on it. I'm, I'm still supportive of everything that you do and what you're doing, but I can be jealous sometimes of stuff. Yeah, I think that's completely normal. I think when people try to suppress it, you, <sighs> jealousy is it's so normal. And like you said, I feel like it has this complete negative connotation when it's all right. Like you can still be so happy and amazed that your your partner in their success or whatever they're doing. But yeah, you might feel a bit like, oh God, I wish I was doing that as well. And that's fine. It's not, it might just drive you forward a bit. I think the, the problem is people suppress it and believe that they shouldn't be feeling it. and Which makes reason- any situation worse. The reason why that is sometimes though is because the way that the term is used, i.e. you will hear people say, oh, oh she's she, so jealous. You're a jealous bitch. Yeah. So you, you're, just, you're just jealous. Like it's used in a very negative way so yeah, that we believe is. that we shouldn't be jealous when there's nothing wrong with it. Like it's, it's just, an, it's another human feeling. It's just had negative associations over years and years and years and years. So it's all that we shouldn't feel that way. The same way that in regards to like the way that whole thing, like men shouldn't show emotions, they shouldn't cry. It's, it's, it's only been one of those things that's, being manifested over years to the point that now men feel like it shouldn't be that way but the more it's spoken about the the more it's kind of out there and it's, it's more relatable to and it's easy to talk about yeah definitely and this actually links in really well to something i wanted to speak about in terms of key factors and when well, this is basing it off our relationship but just before i dive into that one of the things that i forgot to mention about the whole working together on a business is that we actually have a shared vision and that's key for any relationship but particularly important in a business relationship and I think working together to build a business means you kind of had to have clear expectations of one another and sharing the same vision of where you want the business to go so our relationship and our business are obviously very aligned do you know what I thought you were gonna do then I thought you were going to like release our 10 year business strategy plan then. To talk in the here podcast. we go. No, no. But you know what I mean? Like, yeah. we know where we want to be. In fact, we know what we're doing. Yeah. We're so driven with the My Coach School and our business, and we believe yeah. in it so much. And that really, really brings out a lot in our relationship. Like when we're having, when we, when we talk about the business, holy fuck, we get so excited sometimes. Yeah. And I think it's lovely to share that passion with your other half. Like, I think it is truly amazing. Um, but obviously, I think it's important as well to know that goal, but then forget about it. Yeah. Because when you're so, solely focused on it, it just takes away from everything else of the process of your relationship of anything else or yeah. whatever else you're doing. You just need to focus on day to day. Yeah, definitely. And just like the one, I guess this is like a negative thing is sometimes when you do live with someone and you own a business together, you find it harder to stop working. Yeah, that's one of the difficult things, I think. Because it could be like eight eight or nine o'clock at night and we're both still working, but you kind of don't want to stop because you're working on the same thing. Yeah, it's not no like, pull the plug. exactly. It's not like you got in from work at five yeah. and you're chilling the whole night and I would just be sat on my laptop. You would probably say, Lucy, like stop, put your laptop yeah. down. But sometimes we do, especially when there's challenges, we're working no, till work, like yeah. nine till 10 o'clock at night and sometimes it's really difficult to switch off. But I think we got a lot better in this lockdown. Yeah, I think that is also to do like the nature of the business as well. It's like always yeah. twenty four. It's not like a nine to five kind of open shop, shut shop, <laughs> where can where can finish. The other thing though is I think it makes you, it gives you like more empathy in regards. To like I know that you're doing something. I don't know why you're doing something, and I know why yeah. sometimes you have to work later because mm. I sometimes have to do that as well. Yeah, definitely. So it does help you relate to the other person and what they're doing. So there's kind of swings and roundabouts, I suppose, don't I? Is that the right term? Yeah, no, it right does term. completely. The topic that I wanted to go on to is actually communication. And in relationships, communication allows you to explain to someone else what you're experiencing and what your needs are. Now, the actual communication in relationships is essential I think to having a happy healthy partnership and it's not about making small talk in terms of like it's nice to ask your partner how your day is and things like that but what you want is a deep 
a meaningful relationship of that the actual bigger picture and learning how to communicate in a relationship is about fulfilling your partner's needs and what I mean by this is like obviously when you say the word communication a lot of people might just think yeah like I've asked them how their day is I've asked them how they are like what they're up to that's not communicating on a deep level communicating on a deep level is shutting up and listening to them like are they are they are they feeling okay like are they actually okay in lockdown are they mentally okay and things like that yeah i know what you mean i was about to go into communication then as well um do you know one of the the things i wrote down as a bullet point because i I read it well i didn't read it i did it as an audio book ages ago do you remember um oh the five love uh, five languages of love yeah love languages i just called love languages yeah yeah completely forgot everything that was in it it's no, obviously it's everything there's, about gift giving and understanding there's, there's your partner's the thing. Different people will understand the communication of love in different ways. So yeah. some people are I'm not talking in a sexual content and some like how you are as a person. Like some people enjoy giving, some people enjoy receiving, some people enjoy time, some people enjoy affection, tangible gifts, some touch. affection, some people enjoy um receiving like memories i like taking back to like the first time you met bloody blah, blah there's all different like love languages and people relate to different things in different ways and it was all about talk like how you can communicate in a way that your partner will understand and yeah. doing stuff in a way that your partner will enjoy it i think the only thing i couldn't sort of jam with was it was quite religious and i'm not religious yeah so you find it hard to actually relate to some of the things that they were saying. Yeah, but the, the 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 narrative of it was cool. Like I took a lot away from it. It was just some of it wasn't re- like with every book though. There's this the stuff in there where you just like skip, skip. Like it's just there's some yeah. shit that wasn't read. But it was that was a really cool book. And I think one of the biggest things has to be communication. And it's it's only something that will get better as you you talk about it. Like we've had stuff where we just miscommunicated stuff or haven't communicated stuff. Yeah, completely. And I remember the worst one for me was when. I was going through my first really, really bad patch of anxiety and I didn't tell you for like two or three months that I had actually been diagnosed with anxiety. I just didn't tell you. And you every day were like, what's up? Like, And that actually started to push us apart. And that's only when I actually told you like, look, I'm, I'm so anxious. I've been anxious for like three months. Yeah, but and then as soon as you told me, because remember we had that whole period of where you like back and forth from the hospital, had yeah. severe stomach pains, didn't know what was going on for like five or six months. You'd been in surgery to ca- to see if there was anything going on internally. And you told me, and within like a week, I'd done like a bit of digging myself and would find the root cause was the anxiety, was a direct correlation with the stomach problems that you were having. And as soon as then you started to, to deal with the anxiety, the stomach problems went away. Yeah. It, w- it was actually like that quick as well. I remember after quick. the operation, the stomach pain started to come back and I was just absolutely in turmoil. Yeah. And you just said this one thing, like, look, I think it could be your mindset and your anxiety because you've had it for so long. I actually think it's that. And then when I started to work on that, when I opened things up to you, I actually felt so much better. And that is communicating on a deeper level. I know how Ben's day is. I still ask him how his day was and we're usually doing stuff together anyway. But like, like asking him how he actually is like do you feel anxious at the moment like are you okay is there anything you want to chat about and I think that's so important in a relationship if you can't do that with your partner you've kind of got a lot to think about I feel if you can't yeah uh, like feel like you can ask them deep down what they're they're feeling and what their emotions are yeah and it I, took us a while to get there to be fair depends on the person though because some people some people like I've been at a certain point to shut off yeah and then it, 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 put, it backs that person to corner because they don't want to share stuff. Yeah, so it's like getting blood out of stone with you. Oh. <laughs> Isn't that the term? Yeah, but I'm not like that now. <laughs> no, you're not like that now. But you were. You, you never shared because your emotions because you thought, yeah. Because some people aren't ready to open yeah. up stuff as well. Like, and then asking them and asking them and asking them, like backs them into a corner more. Yeah. So yeah, I think you just, you just got to understand what your partner is is about, really. Yeah, definitely. And this... The, m- sorry, just a point. Also, you got to... Pro- I think when it comes to the work-life balance you've got to prioritize your relationship with your partner over anything else even over business over anything like that has to 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 have a successful relationship that's what it's got to be it's got to prioritize it and i think that's why some people aren't ready but whether like for me when i was in business when i first started i wasn't re- i couldn't be in a relationship at the same time because i was prioritizing something else yeah, exactly. nothing wrong with that by the way but you can't be in a relationship and prioritize something else because it's not fair on the other person 
that's why I, I cut my previous one off because it wasn't fair mm. to that person. Like I was too pro, too focused on business, and people might have other priorities, whether it be professional, social. Like they would want to go out with friends more. That's fine. Just don't get in a relationship if you're not going to prioritize the person. Yeah, that's so true because that person should be everything to you really they should mean everything to you and like you said they should be at the top of that list and I think one of the things in terms of how to improve communication and relationship is being open and honest and actually saying how you feel needs to be really clear and sometimes you can be really nervous like I've had some times where I've wanted to speak to Ben about things and I've been so nervous and I've bottled it up for like a couple of hours and I feel like I'm going to explode and a lot of the time retreating from conflict seems safe and it's it's comfortable you know not to have to want to argue and things like that but it's not a substitute for trust in a relationship and it will never ever help you learn how to communicate better because realistically if you're walking away from an argument as a temporary way to deal with an ongoing communication issue that shouldn't be done because you're just going to go back to it all over again you've not actually solved anything and people say to us god you must never argue i think i if you don't argue in a relationship there's something not quite right oh yeah you got <laughs> like you could always have disagreements about things it could be like i don't know what time we're going to go for a walk disagreement because you think one thing i think another no do you know what the ultimate disagreement was yesterday and this really <laughs> pissed me off <laughs> and this is the first time you've ever said it by the way do you know what i'm gonna say no i'm waiting for you I, you just got carried away with it as well. It did actually hurt me a little bit. What? You actually said you believe that Lord of the Rings is better than Harry Potter. I do strongly believe that. That's a fucking bullshit. No, do you know why though? Cal no, completely bullshit. agrees with me because yesterday you got carried away with one scene of Lord of the Rings. She, you got, you got so passionate and involved about it, you've forgotten who you are. No. When the riders of Rohan come over that freaking hill at the at the the end war, I was like, I was honestly, I had heart palpitations like an hour after because, and I think you know when that is your favorite film. I could watch that, and I had this conversation with Cal. I could watch the extended versions for the rest of my life if I had to choose a series. But you've got carried away with one bit. Like, what about the bit where he's just like, Voldemort's done that, done the done this shit. <laughs> And yeah, then, but that's just no, not and then as he's interesting. No, he's in, he's in Hagrid's arms and he's walking back of him and you're getting ready for it. My, my hair's already going on my arm. But he's walking back of him to the castle. He drops and he legs it. He's back. He's fucking back. Yeah, I feel like that's a really emotional part of Harry Potter. However, I feel like Lord of the Rings is more realistic. Do you know what I mean? Like Harry Potter's magic, which is great. Love it. But realistically, I know orcs aren't real, but realistically that whole war scenario that's not what is a more realistic about, okay we're gonna this is where we're gonna we're have gonna to have disagree. to just like, yeah no. so for example this is where we agree to disagree but yeah th- th- that was just like a, a funny disagreement also yesterday. if you're watching this on youtube put in the comments if you agree with me hate just write hp if you agree with lucy just put l-o-t-r yeah that's lord of the rings um in, in oh, short thank by you the way so much for that. if you didn't know i'm sure people were well aware of what that meant but no back onto the whole thing of arguments and conflict it can definitely feel easier to not share how you're feeling and if you don't want to be honest and open about something but when you bottle up and you don't speak about it and I know from experience it can feel really really awful and you'll 100 when you actually speak to your partner they'll more likely than not be understanding and just be happy that you spoke to them about it. Because if you think, for example, they've done something wrong or you don't agree with something and you bottle up, it's going to make you feel awful. If you just communicate and speak to them and say like, oh, that made me feel a bit weird. Why Why did you do that? Or what happened here or X, Y, and Z? And they explain it and then you have an explanation. And then that's kind of all you need. Yeah, I think when you when you... If you're thinking about saying something and you feel like it's a really touchy topic and you're scared about saying something, it's probably you should be talking about it. Yeah, I think that's like with anything in life though. Yeah. Not even just, just relationships. Addressing, addressing something that needs to be addressed. But I think, and this was, I think it was, is it from Jordan Peters? 
I'm the not guy sure. who made the tw- 12 life 12 rules. rules of life yeah, yeah i've not read it but he he suggests having 90 minutes of uninterrupted time to speak per week whether that's like all in one block like it's probably not it's that doable. an hour Maybe, and a half quite no but he means spread over the week okay it's not that hard like if me and you went for a walk for an hour oh yeah we chat an, about that's an life. hour of uninterrupted time and we do that pretty much every day mm. plus look what we're doing now yeah we're having this is here, probably yeah. like 60 to 90 minutes of uninterrupted time where me and you were just talking mm. but just fucking people who have nothing better to do just listen to us as well yeah <laughs> that wasn't don't take offense by huh. the way we know you're joking we know this fuck all to do at the moment <laughs> but um we have this time to talk to each other and we have it's, it's the same with a walk like when, i think when you say it 90 minutes you think jesus christ is a football match that it sounds that like a long definitely time definitely not the first thing that comes to my head well that's the first thing that comes to my head i could have watched Everton get beat but yeah. if you go for an hour walk with your partner there's 60 minutes to have done straight away and those type of things then don't become issues because you're just spending time talking. And when I say not interrupted, I mean like not on phones, not doing any other shit, which is very, very difficult because everyone's on the phone all the time. I think that's a really, really big one, the phone thing, because sometimes it might be a bit different because mine and Ben's job is partly on social media as well and we work online. So being on our phones is quite a common thing in our relationship. However, we both know when we need to be off them and we need to actually spend time with each other and just, to be fair, actually, we're not on them that that much considering we work yeah. off our phones. And especially when we go for a walk, we always say to each other, right, phones in our pockets. Like, yeah. I, I like and then we, we, we get into those deeper conversations. I think that's when we have our most open and deep conversations because when you're walking as well, you're actually technically kind of exercising but you're out and about when you're moving your body you can think better you can focus a bit more you're in the fresh air rather than say if you were you wanted to be open and honest by sitting inside on the sofa it might not be as easy it might be easier to actually go out on a walk and have a have a chat with your partner that way if you actually want to connect to them on a deeper level yeah 100 percent. there was one thing that i want to because we fire for it as well, which is, it's like kind of off on a tangent, but it does still relate. Mm. What do you think of people who say, um, I want to be single forever? It's up to them. I actually don't really have, personally for me, I wouldn't want to be single forever. I, I enjoy affection. I enjoy, my love language is giving gifts and affection and touch so I love it when you're affectionate to me and you say things like you're proud of me see touching me just you know you just touched my hand then by the way guys <laughs> I, that is that is my love language though like being affectionate and and it's a weird one because I've read about this in a book and you definitely obviously shouldn't rely on positive reinforcement but, but when, psychologically that's massively powerful positive when yeah when Ben says he's proud of me I literally I just that is like the best thing in the world to me. I think that's such a wonderful thing. And I, I enjoy being with you in a mm. relationship. I just wouldn't want to be single forever. Like I want to have my future with you, like the house next year. I want to get married. I want to have kids. I want to have a family. You don't so yourself, I just, yeah. thank you so much. Thanks so much. I Do think, you know what I mean? Though? Yeah, I think, I think um, it's very personal. I, I, have, I haven't got an opinion. Like I've got, I've got friends who said they want to be single. Sometimes, like, what we say in certain parts of our lives don't always, aren't always applicable, like, in another 10-year time. I think we say certain things for our lives just because it's it's in the moment. It's how we feel at the time. Potentially, for some people, it's for people who've been hurt as well. Yeah. And don't want to be hurt again. They have, like, again. trust issues. Yeah. Like, I've got no opinion on it, but I think, as people, like, we are social animals. Yeah. We we enjoy company. We, we statistically are social animals. All the research states that our human behavior is we enjoy being around people which is why lockdown i think has been quite difficult especially this third lockdown yeah where you can't even socialize with your friends yeah i think though at this moment in time it's probably well i don't mean in in covid because it obviously makes it more difficult but i I mean like in in general in this area it's, it's easier to have casual relationships now more than ever what's that don't make me say it. Come on. Oh, like friends with benefits. Yeah, or just going out and having like a stand, or yeah, like 
I think like now is an easier time than ever. So maybe that's why people yeah. don't aren't like in relationship. I don't know what the stats are, but I don't know. Maybe that's why those people are saying they don't want a relationship because at that moment in time they're just enjoying having casual relationships. Mm. Nothing wrong with that either. Which is which is one hundred percent fine. And this is this whole thing. Like someone asked me the other day, do you agree with marriage? I I don't agree or disagree with it. I feel like I personally want to get married, but also a lot of my friends don't want to. Like one of my best friends since I was ten years old. She doesn't want to get married or have kids. And that is fine. She's been in a relationship for like six years. Some people just don't. They just don't actually want to get married. But some people do. I don't ever think that should be, there should be a stigma. I've actually haven't looked at that, but I haven't around up. That. Um, Just the, the stats on marriage and then also divorce. Yeah, so I was Googling this earlier. So during COVID, there's been 122% increase in divorces. 122 percent increase in divorces. Yeah. Really? Since March 31st. That's really sad. And that's because... They're locked I don't down know together. Why, because they're locked I think that's why this, this... Again, this could be like one of the most important podcasts we've well. Just like some tips that we've taken away from being together all the time of how your relationship could be longer lasting. Because I think it is so hard and you, you've got to spend that extra time together. I know my mates, by the, some of my the lads, who fucking can't wait to go to the pub because it's the time they can get away from the missus. That makes me sad. I, I, I don't agree with it because I, I personally like love spending time with you and I I can't wait to come back, but oh my God, sorry, <laughs> I forgot to say that, by the way. She's, she's kicking me under the table. Um, no. She's not. But it's important, I think, in a relationship as well to have your own space and to have your 1, own time. Percent. And people aren't getting that. And I think that's why possibly those stats are coming up. It's like one of those things, though, as well. I've really well obviously i've not been training because i've got stitches if you can see on the camera you probably kind of got plasters all I over think, my body i think the whole world's probably heard yeah, about I your, they, I hope they do know. your stitches um but i've not been training at the moment and i've been taking myself personally off out on a walk for about an hour and a half and i've not been walking with ben because at this moment in time he knows it's something that i have to do personally for my mental health yeah. my mental health and he's so respectful of that and there's been times when i've not been injured and we've both been training where i just don't want to go for a walk and he does and he'll go for a walk and he'll ring his mom or his dad or his sister and his mate and stuff and he'll go out and walk on his own or sometimes i just want to sit in my room and read my book and have and have some me time Again, Ben's not going to come down and say, why aren't you spending every single second with me? He's not going to come down and say that. Yeah, I think uh, potentially part of that though, and why, again, maybe there's been so many divorces or maybe there's split ups and stuff as well. Again, I don't know the, the stats on like splitting up. I'm sure there isn't a, a database of, of that. Um, it's probably more temptation than ever. With what? Technology. Yes. To just be on it, you mean? Well, and like ignore for, your partner. For accessibility to other people, like for example, when uh, maybe back in like mom, your mum and dad's type of era, yeah, the only other people that they would potentially see was those that they were walking past in the street, that they would see in the supermarket, the the people that they'd see when they're dropping you off at school, maybe. Now the number of people that they see of the opposite sex is hundreds, if not hundreds of thousands of people yeah. on social media who they can connect with like that in an instant. Mm. So the, whether like someone wanted to speak to other people or cheat or whatever, it wasn't as accessible uh, then. Yeah, so the yeah, temptation yeah. Is, is now there, but also the the implementation of the action is, is way easier than what it was back then. You would have to go up and speak to someone, mm. which is a lot more daunting than just going, hello, sexy. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> it's... Um, I think that the temptation is a lot higher, and it, because of social media, it's a lot more accessible to other people. If they if they had the temptation already, they've now got the tools to be able to implement. Well, this is actually a question we get asked a lot, isn't it? In terms of, do you find it hard being like big on social media, and like li like girls and boys like each other's pictures? And I just always say to people, this is one of my questions as well. By the I way, I just say to people out of respect. Me and Ben don't we don't do that because don't, don't cover too much because we've got a couple of questions to ask you. On oh, it. you go on it then because I I'm I'm. But good. yeah, that was just the temptation thing. Obviously, there's things like Bumble. Is Bumble it? I don't Bumble, Bumble Tinder. Tinder. I know Carl's on Grinder. <laughs> um, it's the gay one. Oh, that's a joke. Okay, I didn't laugh. I'm sorry. I know. Just I, move on. 
Well, I know, I know that you are heterosexual male, so me making that reference is just throwing throwing you in there a little bit to maybe some guys who find you very attractive. Yeah, make sure you do. Um, but yeah, there's there's lots of these other platforms that make it easy accessible mm. for, for people for dating as well. Like obviously, it's it's a good way for for people to connect. I think the only thing is though that connection is a lot more shallow than it would be when people meet in person. Yeah, I I mean I wouldn't ever use them or did before Ben because I was scared of catfishes. <laughs> I feel like when it's four, sometimes it's, it's it is. How difficult. could you not be scared of that? You're the person you're speaking to is a six year old man yeah i just think they're quite dangerous to be, to be quite frank you're not supposed to meet up with people on your own are you if you meet with someone off it's it's like recommended that like if you meet someone off tinder yeah you should tell your friend where you are or they should be with you in case they're the, not the person they are yeah yeah it's difficult isn't it? I mean, i'm also a worrier that so. with, that's the thing with <laughs> the question gonna be like what do you think technology has done for relationships I think for a lot of them... Do you think it's them, positive or negative more so? Swaying towards... Negative. Uh, uh, negative, do you reckon? Okay. Yeah, because, like you said before, and I get this question off girls all the time, like, how do you deal with Ben liking, like, other girls' pictures? I'm like, what kind of pictures are you on about, like, underwear, like, porn pictures? I'm like, he doesn't... Because he knows I don't like it. Like, end this... of, like, you should have that conversation with your partner. If you don't like it, just as, like, I wouldn't go on... On think, Instagram yeah. and like nude pictures of men because Ben would be like, "What the fuck are you doing?" I think that was one of those things. Though, like, is is what I was going to ask. Like, what is acceptable? Because I think that's a question that we get asked quite a lot. It massively depends on on the relationship and what your what your partner's comfortable with. I think there's got to be a given a bit of give and take. Like, in regards, I wouldn't do stuff that makes you uncomfortable, but at the same time, you couldn't say to me, "Don't like hair photos." I was like, "Why? It's my sister." Or like, <laughs> not to that degree, but why? It's like it's one of my good friends, or it's some of that I support. Like, there's got to be some stuff in regards to it that is absolutely not too far. But I think it's a, a discussion that you got to have with your partner in, re- in regards to when you're in a relationship. I don't think you should be liking uh, f- other females' pictures. Who like? I think uh, like- uh, no, 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 no. What I think, what I believe is, it de- it massively depends on what the intention is. What is the intention of why you've double tapped that photo? Mm. Is it because right, I feel like I'd like to better or is it because it's like I support a piece of content, it's educational, um, it's someone who is part of my community. Like there's different reasons why, and the, the, I think it's harder when you're in the fitness industry because people are half naked all the time. Yeah. I think that's where me and Ben are pretty great with that though. Like we understand the industry. So Ben follows loads of girls who are great and into fitness and they look freaking fantastic yeah he likes their content because they look great they're lifting heavy they're strong they're powerful women that doesn't bother me because that's what i promote and i do the same with him like a lot of ben's mates or people i follow yeah they're in great shape and we we know them you like a lot of people's posts who well, I'll be like half naked, I'm not half naked because it's just guys with the tops off. Yeah. Who like Gymshock athletes, like, like for example. Like Elliot, Zach, Yeah, Nathan. and I know the reason that you're doing that is because you're supporting them. You're supporting yeah. them, you're supporting, them. You support the part of the community. And I think that's what you've got to realise and you've got to have an underst- a mutual understanding with your partner to that. But then at the same time, if someone is mega, mega anxious about it, makes them feel down, don't do it. Like, yeah, you don't want to upset your partner. And like, I probably said at the very start of our relationship, look, I won't like it if you like porn pics on Instagram. At the same time, End though, of. if that is the other person's issue and a trust issue, there needs to be some work done from the other person because mm. not it's not right to make that pe- person feel trapped and they, they can't do certain things because that's your issue. It's not yeah. their issue. Yeah, one hundred percent. You just have to like know your partner's um, level of like your boundaries, really. Yeah. And we we're great with it. Like we have communicated so well because we do work on a platform on Instagram and on social media, and we. We're very open and honest with each other. We just, it's not an issue for myself and Ben, but if you're feeling like, I don't know, you're uncomfortable with your partner liking girls' underwear photos, for example, just just say to him, look, like, is there an intention behind it? Like, it just makes me feel a little bit uncomfortable. And they might, they honestly, boys can be boys. They might not even notice he's doing anything. But if you bring it up and say, look, I'm really sorry, it's just making me feel this sort of way. You can just have a conversation. It, I think it's, it is fairly obvious sometimes though because I've even seen people who I am um, like in the same industry as. Yeah, and and we've been like that slide. Yeah, where <laughs> yeah. it's like they've liked someone else's photo 
and it's like a girl lying down on the bed in With a phone. No, not of a tits off. Just, just awesome in the air. And it's like, oh, chill vibes. No, a coffee or whatever. <laughs> Brunch. Cow was going on with this yesterday. And they've liked the photo. And it's got the fuck all to do with fitness. And it's like, mm, bit too far. Yeah. But again, and it's a, this is great that me and Ben can talk about this so openly. Because it might help some of you just maybe like if you do feel anxious or you want to have a conversation like guy or girl with your partner, go ahead and just have the mm. conversation. Like, and if you feel like you can't have that conversation, you can build up to it and just definitely think like you need to work on your communication, maybe a little bit on like a yeah. deeper level, which is fine. There's always things to work on in a relationship. The other thing that I was going to bring up, and I think this is the one that is most harmful for with social media mm. is comparing your relationship with someone else's yeah oh, we get that a lot unfortunately the it's thing, not, do you know it's what the thing is as well one. though because i'm sure you could probably take flick through like the search engine of instagram or other platforms and see like oh there's two godlike adonises slouched over a lamborghini in the desert of dubai and it's like oh i'm stuck in my flat with my partner and two kids and he's sitting there picking his horse eating beans and it's like, at that moment in time, you've made the comparison of two completely different situations. Yeah. And it's easy to see why people are then, well, why can't I have that? And again, it's that thing of, because we now have it served on a plate. By the way, those those images are just obviously completely set up. They're an absolute glimpse and a highlight reel of that relationship. It doesn't mean that they are any happier than what you are. They still have low points. They... Also, the money, the, the financial argue. side of it, even if they have a lot of money, doesn't not make them them happy. By the way, no. usually it just causes more issues if there's already rifts there. And I think that's the most difficult thing again, because looking back into maybe when our mum and dad, for example, were in relationships, they didn't really have anything to compare it to apart from probably the mates' relationships. Whereas now you see all these other things in regards to people in fancy hotels staying away and look what they're doing but there's a lot more to compare to but they don't see the other side so like me and you have arguments sometimes yeah and we're not going to post a picture you don't po- i'm not going to post it on a picture <laughs> i'll talk about it on a I podcast or a long piece of content I, I cry a lot just in general i mean i cried last night at lord of the rings but i'm not going to get cow to come around like sorry just take a picture of me and ben are arguing yeah. want to post on my page <laughs> like, it just we do happen. put a couple of things up every now and again and it, they probably are on fancy locations and stuff it's just like a, a celebration of that and point we, en- we enjoy those pictures yeah, yeah. and that's what you tend to do with instagram you put up the content that you enjoy and that i think you instagram's really like. the worst place for it because there's yeah. no real context of there's just a snippet I think Whereas like when we do YouTube good. video or podcast we can talk about a whole range of stuff that happens in a relationship not just the pinnacle of it but youtube's actually really good because i'm on quite a lot of your videos probably do and you can, but you can see our relationship really well where for example the other week ben jumped on my back and i thought i was i was literally going to crumble to the floor and just melt do you know what the thing i was thinking because of? he caught my he caught my stitches on the side and i've never i look back and i was so freaking dramatic yeah it didn't even hurt did it <laughs> didn't hurt i just yeah. got paranoid it's fucking standard the other time i was thinking of when we built that bench Oh, I thought DIY I thought in relationships, by me. the way, is the thing that don't go together very well. <laughs> I've, just, I've just stood there in the video holding the spanner for like an hour. Because <laughs> you are a spanner, basically. And Ben's like, pass me the spanner. I'm like, oh, sorry. <laughs> so that, that was the other thing is likes and comments and stuff and technology. I think the other thing that I was going to touch on is what, just really quickly, what would be your red flags? In a relationship? Yeah, or a partner. Relationship or a partner. I don't, uh, I guess like being secretive. Yeah. In terms of like, this is a weird one though. Like, and I've, I've, I've said this to like Cal before and stuff because we all share each other's Instagrams. Oh, that's, gonna say, that's what I was going to talk about, yeah. Or it's never an issue for us. Like, sometimes Ben uses my phone to go on my Instagram to look at something. And we're just not asked about passing each other our phones. Like, it's just not a big deal. I think maybe if like, you were sat with your partner and a message popped up on something and they quickly like pulled it away or something or or they were just being a bit like really defensive. I don't, I've never had a red flag with you so I can't, I couldn't really give an example or maybe like um, lying about where where they've been and things like that. Um, That's all I can think of. Yeah, I think that was going to be one of ones for me is if... If your partner has to check your phone, like say I've gone to the toilet, I've left my phone on the side and I know that you've checked my phone. Yeah, that that's is a weird. big red flag to me because that just signals trust issues. Yeah, massively. You don't 
yeah but you don't need to be doing that or you don't want to spend no time together like you just want to go out and do other stuff which doesn't involve you is another red flag because you just don't want to spend time with that person it's not really ideal is it no i've actually just pulled up some red flags as well oh, go on then. just because i thought we actually <laughs> we're probably not the best people no, to give experiences really got that many on red, red flags. flags um okay so they try to drive a wedge between you and your family and friends oh well yeah that's a big one they roll your eyes at you a lot. I think, sorry, the, the other big one is, like, that they can't get on with any of your friends. Like, that's not a yeah, good thing. Yeah, can't get on with friends or family. Or they say something negative about your family. Yeah. They describe all their exes as crazy, which is an interesting one. That's similar to, like, when you have a, a coach, I think, as well. Like, if we take on a client and, like, I've had five different coaches and they were all shit, usually it's a problem with you, not the not the coach. And it's the same, like, mm-hmm. it's probably a, a problem with you, not the partner's. They have no work ethic. They're on a different sleep schedule. That's uh, they're secretive. Mm-hmm. Oh, secretive is a big one, yeah. Um, they demand your phone, email, social media passwords. Again, not appropriate. Also, they don't disclose anything about the past or previous. I think that's probably a bit weird. Yeah, not uh, not being open and honest. Like, it could be like a, a mass murder, and you just wouldn't ever know. Um. Oh, this one's actually a really important one for, um. I think anyway, they make fun of you during sex. I thought, I thought you were going to say something else. I think that would be a red flag. That would be a horrible thing because it's a very intimate situation. Yeah, I think talking about sex in that way isn't isn't good. I thought you were going to say like taking the piss in general. I I do take the piss out of you sometimes. All the time. <laughs> Not in a jokey way. Yeah, but I would never do something which is like I think there's boundaries. You've got to know where you know my boundaries. Do you remember when Alima did that banter scale? I think that was quite yeah, relevant yeah, yeah. because you've got to know where people, where your relationship is with that person to give that level of banter. And the difference between banter and then me like attacking you or like giving criticism because mm. you, you've got to know your boundaries and stuff about it. It does then become um, a hole, a dark hole. Yeah. Okay, I'm just going to do three more because I think these are really great. They refuse to make your relationship public. Oh, wow. Yeah. I don't know if that's a massive red flag, though, because it really depends. Uh, I think... Yeah. If people, if people like, don't want to be in the social eye, or people being on social, social media, eye. yeah, perfect. I yeah. think if you're on social media, like, like, me and Ben, we own a business together. Our business is online, so obviously we're going to share it. But I think if you're big on social media and you don't want to share your relationship... That's fine, yeah. And also, the partner might not want to be shared on your social media. Do you know what? I think shady as shit, though. Like, if, if, for example, you did go somewhere else where people didn't know you... And they went, are you in a relationship? And then they just say, no, that is no. shady as shit. Yeah, yeah, that's just nasty. Because then you're not you're not proud yeah. to be in that relationship. Um, they have a different idea than you of what it means to be faithful. So they have... So say, for example, I reckon ex- an example could be they don't think flirting on a night out is bad, but you do. Yeah. Like that's a diff... You're, they're thinking differently about what's being faithful yeah. and what's not. Mm-hmm. Um, and then lastly they're incapable of apologising I was that was one of my things actually a pot was apologies yeah sometimes it takes a lot to apologise but sometimes you just have to it depends what it is like obviously it's, it's hard sometimes sometimes you can't apologise straight away we're, yeah we're, we're quite great at it you, now, can't, you, you sometimes can't go oh let's just apologise and forget about it mm. there's, 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 there's been times where something we've said to each other has been a bit, a bit too far and it's like you can't just breeze over it straight away you, just t- you need to leave, give that person a bit of space yeah well sometimes I could have said something to you and then I really regretted it but I felt too embarrassed yeah. to say sorry like straight away but obviously we always do apologise but sometimes you just feel a bit like oh fucking hell like I should not have said that the way I, I did or... that, like I've got a short fuse and I'll sometimes say something in the heat of the moment that you don't mm. mean but you always apologise, and it's never. Yeah. It's but sometimes they need to leave you to have your space, though. Sometimes as well. Yeah, definitely. Um. Yeah. Cool. I think they're probably the, the best red, red flags. I'm now gonna go on to this. This. Don't do like a quick fire or something, because that's too much pressure. It's not quick fire. I'm gonna do. I'll do. I'll do it vice versa. By the way, annoying traits about each other. My annoy. What I think about you. Yeah. You gulp. When you drink. I don't even know what you're talking don't about. Don't please. Everyone block your ears. Everyone block your ears. Is that loud then? That actually wasn't too bad. But that's that. That's not an annoying... Uh, ben, stop it, please. That's really gross. <laughs> that's actually really disrespectful. <laughs> I hate that. See, it's not just Ben, though. That's that is, that's it actually, like your phobia. That's my phobia. When people eat loud or gulp, it actually has a name. I think it's like misophobia or something. Uh. So it's not necessarily Ben. <clears throat> 
but because I'm always, <laughs> I'm always next to him and he does Literally, it. If anyone's been listening to the podcast a long time, she what's <laughs> after saying, stop drinking so loud. I hold up my phone with a note on saying stop gulping. Yeah. <laughs> but obviously, obviously, that is a me problem. Yeah, that is not that a me problem. Because that annoys me sometimes I literally have to feel like I eat and drink. Like, I don't know what. It is a phobia though because I've had to self-teach myself how not to gulp when I drink because I used to hate listening to myself. Okay. So, any, any more? Um, I think sometimes you can be quite rational on a decision. Irrational, you mean? I don't know which one I mean. Rational means that you've oh, thought irrational. Through. Sometimes you'll just be like yeah, too yeah. quick to, to do something or judge or say something yeah, yeah. Um, rather than actually thinking maybe about the consequence of how it would potentially make me feel or like a second consequence. But I mean, do you know what? You don't I, really have I, this, any. this probably doesn't apply to relationships because me and Carl were talking yesterday about recording stuff and we were talking like sometimes it's better to take action. Um, what was the quote? It's better to ask for forgiveness than permission. Better to ask for forgiveness. Easier to ask ask for forgiveness. I suppose that doesn't apply in a concept, but it's about like taking action mm. without permission and doing something than asking for forgiveness if you fuck it up. Mm. I suppose it's not as applicable, but I'll, the right yeah, exactly. I think it depends what the intention is as well. And like if it was if it was in the moment, like I've said so to you before, just on a whim, and it's like oh, I didn't, I didn't actually mean that. Yeah. What I'm, what am I? I think you know what yours is. Cleaning. Fuck. Me. <laughs> like, Again though. No no no. Let me explain. Me let me explain. Yeah, but. but no joke, and I've said this before on the podcast. Okay, I'm sitting here. I've been waiting ages for stuff, something to eat because I've been nice. working. I've sat down. Okay, what what I'm thinking about what I'm having. I've, I really enjoy Uncle Ben's barbecue rice at the moment. So I sat down. Uncle Ben's barbecue rice, chicken's done on the side, big splodge of mayo. I think oh, this what cup? No, no, no. <laughs> what else comes with it? Oh, a big fat spray of um, antibacteria all over my fucking chicken and rice because she's cleaning it up <laughs> as I'm eating. Who, this has only happened a few times when he spilled. Okay, I will tell you what, it happened last night when I was making my yogurt. You were spraying. The, I? the other thing, no joke. I every time <laughs> now I do it, I lock the toilet door because you come in and start <laughs> cleaning the bathroom and I'm a mid shit. Do you know what though? Again, that is a me problem. I've had it, it since I was really young. In terms of my sister says the same. She's like Lucy, stop cleaning. I think when you actually have OCD and anxiety, which I have both been, di- to be fair, I have both been diagnosed with it. It's really hard for me not to do it sometimes. Like even Cal will have experienced it with me. Like when he puts his coat on the chair, I will take that motherfucker downstairs. And it's just, it's not him. It's not you. It's it's genuinely, I can't relax. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So it's really difficult because Ben's really tidy. He's I'm not so really t- tired. Like, if I was on a scale of like one to ten, I am like about six. Yeah, sort of like over middle road. Like, I'm not untidy, but I'm not like mega tidy. I'm just quite casual. Yeah. I'm Whereas like, I'm away. a twelve. Yeah. I'm like off the scale, She's so sometimes scale, yeah. it's hard to, it's hard to just be okay with that. Yeah. But I, it is something I work on. <laughs> I forgot what my other point was then. I'm just great. That's the only point. No, there was another one. Oh, don't I don't say there's another it. one. It's just absolutely gone out of my head and it was absolutely really important. If you can't remember it though, it can't be that It was. I'm going to I'm gonna classify it as like you often are, are too over competitive. Oh yeah, I agree with to that. To the point where like it's not a competition and then you you, cr- you make, make it, it a competition. competition. I agree with that. Again, I've got to work on it myself. <laughs> yeah, it was actually a really important point that now and I've, I've forgot about it. Yeah, being over competitive, surely that's the... the oh point. no, sorry. God, one, don't tell me there's a third. <laughs> that, that's not that bad though, because I'm over competitive, so I think we both mm. fall into that category. Your spatial awareness sometimes. Yeah, it's that I walk into you constantly, don't no, I? No, like when you're doing, say for example, we're both in the kitchen, you're like a bulldozer. Like mm. you you, do, you don't see anyone else there. Like what you focus on doing your thing. Yeah. I can be next to you. And say if you don't come on cooking something, you're just like, I'm literally, we'll get pushed into the corner. Yeah. I think you do it with Meg as well sometimes. Yeah, it's not I just do. like, just, it's I, not like I a relationship apologize. thing. It's like a, your spatial awareness sometimes. It isn't there. Yeah. It doesn't exist. Yeah. I completely agree with that. And also, do you know what is like great? The fact that me and Ben can have this conversation. Yeah. What One of the ones you probably have not put on mine is like, Matt, I have the patience of, of a, a screwdriver. Is the screw, screwdriver have patience? Exactly my point. <laughs> I mean, that's a very weird comparison. Oh, no, but the point was, I would, you, a screwdriver doesn't have patience. Yeah, I have very like, little patience. patience. I just want shit done now. Yeah. 
I never can't do it. That's not always, always no, the know. case. Like things can't be done. Like, yeah, yeah. And that's why I need to learn to have more and just calm down sometimes a little bit and just come away from a task or come away from something and just chill for a sec. Yeah, which is fine. Again, it's something that which is which is actually okay that Ben isn't as patient because I can be really really patient. Yeah. So that helps him, and then he helps me being like, look, don't tidy that away. Like just just leave yeah. it for a sec. Like. Because that pushes me past the boundary that I'm not comfortable with, with having like OCD and tidying yeah. up as well. And it's having that ability in a relationship to not be nasty about your other person's thing. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, don't like penalize them for mm. it. It's just something that they had that before they were in a relationship with you. You now need to work on that together. It's not going to change. They're not going to change. Yeah. They shouldn't have to change. You just have to say, okay, look, Ben, I'm really clean and tidy just letting you know and then Ben yeah. say yeah I've got a patience of a screwdriver but yeah yeah it's sometimes about get, getting it out there as well like I just need to release something sometimes mm. rather than bottle her up yeah for sure remember like when my car got robbed put my hand through the wall yeah Ben punched a hole in my wall and I was, I was right, so calm wasn't I I yeah, just you called, were very calm I called the plasterer and I was like yeah. I'm really sorry my boyfriend punched the wall can we just get it fixed yeah. I and think I was really calm. we are I think we're going to go into a game I think we are going, going to finish off the game. game. Firstly, though, I just wanted to really touch on this because I think because we've got a platform and um, with a lot of people who listen, and we've got quite a big following across like all platforms. I think it's also an important time. I'm going to ask Cal just to pull up a couple of stats if there is any, just on domestic abuse because I know there's been um, rising stats with domestic abuse as well. I don't think anyone should have to put up with domestic abuse, but with violence in a relationship, it's it's not on at all. But we know that it goes on. Like I work for the the, the police for four or five years probably in total and it, it's something that I saw a lot of mm-hmm. um, I've saw the damage it's caused to, to people mentally physically to families and the, the knock-on effects to that and I think it's important that if you need someone to speak to that you've got to open up what you've got to talk to other people about it you've got to talk to relevant authorities um, and you need to reach out to people if, if it's something that and if you don't want to talk to the police I know there's relevant um lines you can open open conversation with as well there's things as well that i saw on the news i obviously don't know how true this is you got a lot of things on the news but where people i think they were going into boots and they had a code word oh yeah they tell the person behind the till it was something like potato and the person behind the till knows that that person is suffering with from a physical abuse from a partner so when i was working in a bar Wow. Well, if someone goes into a bar and asks for an angel shot, yeah. it was a signal of domestic abuse. Yeah, so then you just call, you, um, you, do, you have to grab a manager and then just make sure that you're with them at all times. Yeah, okay. wow. So you go support that person. Because, you could, because realistically, they could be at the bar with that yeah. partner or they could be sat at a table and you've gone up to get the drinks and you say, angel shot. And then, I mean, really... Oh, and you also don't Oh yeah, obviously. Stop the drink, yeah. Wow. There's there's loads of training I did it on the, the, with the police, which is completely irrelevant. This was more so to do with like they they should they shouldn't be left together. Like the, the other person has to leave the household and go to somewhere else. They can't be left there. Yeah. They're just completely different for the person who's like there and needs the support. Um. And there was obviously what, try, what I also do actually. I'll I'll um I'll ask Cal to put it in the in the YouTube links and I'll also put it in the podcast links. It's a just helpline. just a helpline for yeah. domestic abuse, and and if you need to speak to someone, obviously the, those um those lines will be be there for you if if needed for support and advice moving forward. Because yeah, we definitely. don't have the advice. Like I, I'm not qualified to give advice on that, but if we can just give put that message out there and and help people who may be struggling, then I think that's a great thing to be able to do. Yeah, definitely. And there was a lot on the news about the stats increasing during lockdown as well. Yeah. yeah. In terms of domestic abuse. So yeah, as Ben said, those links, helplines, whatever we can find, we'll pop in the description of the YouTube I video for you. I think that's going to be natural, isn't it, with the amount of people locked up mm-hmm. together. It's going to spend a lot more time together. That, that Those rates are going to going to um, continue to increase as well. So people need some more support with that. Yeah, indeed. So we're going to play a game. <gasps> that reminds me of that you probably, you probably you on, um, you probably if you're on you probably if you're on watch listen to this on Thanks. Apple um, if you want to switch over to the YouTube channel and watch this it's probably going to be a bit more visual and, than anything one thing that I'm going to have to say is that I do need a wee wee as well so 
That's okay. We'll just do like a really quick. Do you know what I was going to say? How do some people do two or three hour podcasts, by the way? They ha- must have a pause. They occasionally just jump out of the room. What are those things for? Like you can get fitted in the hospital in your penis? We could buy a cafeteria. You don't. That's really no. Okay. That was just an idea. No. Okay, okay. So how does the game work? Okay, so the game works. I ask a question. And then um, it's going to be, the question's going to be directed about Ben. Okay. And then you're both going to write down what Ben's answer is. Okay. So, first question is... Okay. Okay, just to, just to clarify, Carl's going to be asking questions. If you can't hear him very well, I'll repeat. I'll slip to the audio points. Yeah, I'll, re- I'll repeat the question anyway, just so um, it can be heard properly. And, okay, so you know I write is. down the answer to whatever Ben... Something about Ben. Yeah, so, yeah. basically, what is Ben's most annoying habit? What is my most annoying habit? So we kind of just covered that. Yeah. And then do I hold it up? And then at the same time. Okay, wait there, I haven't wrote it down I've, yet. Jesus Christ, you wrote that fast. Your most annoying habit, we just spoke about it. I forgot what it is already. Okay, well, I've you're going to have to write forgot. something. I have no idea. Oh, gulping. You, just, you can't tell me. Yeah, but... I'll have to do that one again, because you just told me what the fuck well, answer is. Well, gulping. Okay. Don't point to it. Okay. <laughs> right. What is... Um, okay, what is Lucy's biggest... What is Lucy's biggest phobia? Oh. Okay. Um. I don't know if you'll get this one, because that's actually quite skew with from the conversation that we had before. If you're listening to the podcast, guys, we are here. We are just writing our very. Okay, you ready? Our very good answers. Answers go. What did you put? Cliffs or heights? Are you joking? Every time you go near edge, you're like, I want to jump off. Yeah. Because I I like jumping off cliffs okay, what and was climbing your dogs. Oh god, yeah. Well, oh wow. Well. Like I mean, I'm like an adventure seeker. Like I ski mountains, no, I, I don't ski, think that's I climb. It. You've got um, what's it called? No, a psychological I've death got, wish. I've got a death wish, which is actually again a psychological thing. So if I walk over, it's not a fear though. Yeah, no. My to explain it better, my psychology teacher had this. So my psychology teacher had a death wish, which when he was close to edges, he would like, no joke, his wife would have to watch mm. what, what he was doing because he would just, he would subconsciously be drawn to the edge to the yeah. point where he'd jump off. Yeah, well, I have it with knives and I've said to you, because Kyle's like, Lucy, don't hold a knife because I, I won't, but because I have that psychological thing and it's really, really common and I've spoke about it on my story, it links with OCD. I want to stab myself and it's really strange it's like a lot of people have it with the car. When you're driving a car, a lot of people just want to turn the steering wheel. Yeah. I don't have... you actually want to stop yourself. No, you don't at just... all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not even... Qu- I would okay. never... It's just like a weird thing. Okay, next, next right. question. Next question. What is Ben's least favourite food? What's my least favourite food? God, the boy eats absolutely everything. Um, oh, I actually know. I'll know more than he does. Least favourite food. Yeah, but my answer. You can't... This is what I mean. So... I don't have a say in a lot of stuff because Lucy will just. <laughs> no, but this is actually your worst food. My worst food. Okay, I'm just going to guess at this what you might have put. I lo- this would be really sad if we don't get any of the same answers. Are you ready? Three, two, one. I put Marmite. Olives? Oh, shit, yeah, it is actually. <laughs> See, I know you better than you know yourself. Because you would eat Marmite, but you yeah, don't like olives. Yeah, because olives are basically like. Grapes that have been left at the bottom of the sea for like two weeks. It's yes, of what they taste like. Yeah. Right, next one. Okay, last question is Lucy's biggest celebrity crush. Lucy's biggest celebrity crush. You won't get this one either. Oh, God. I'm going to guess at this one. This would be hilarious if you get this. Because I still find it hilarious because it's actually kind of a fictional character. Oh, for God's sake. I'm never going to get now then, am I? You can't pick a fictional character. <laughs> no, but he's, he's real. He's so real. Okay, I would have put um, The Rock and Moana if it was going to be a fictional character. No, not that fictional. Okay, three, two, one, go. I put Gerard Butler. Oh, he's great as well. No, but I put Orlando Bloom when he plays Legolas. Okay. Is that just cool. when he plays Legolas or just yeah, in general? when he I'm plays Legolas. Shit, okay. He's cool. But they were so exciting. Thanks so much for that, Cal. And I feel like that wraps up the podcast really nicely. And this was actually, it felt like a therapy session. I think when you talk about your relationship so in depth, 
<clears throat> it's really, really important. And obviously we've been through quite a lot of things today in terms of communication, social media, working together, living together. Obviously what Ben touched on at the end there is is really important. That's a very, very serious um, subject and topic. So yeah. we'll leave those links below. Obviously just to, to finish off again, we are not experts in relationships and giving out advice. We are pretty much just two people who go to the gym two people in a relationship in, in <laughs> that's a business, literally what we are and yeah. just enjoying life at the moment and they're just some of the little snippets and nuggets, nuggets. of that and you're gonna say nuggets so i got I'm it before, loving, yeah. i know i'm loving nuggets nugget makes <laughs> you th- think of poo golden though, you know? poo <laughs> no it makes you think, think of golden, golden nuggets? nuggets i think of poo nuggets oh. we're just two people enjoying life at the moment and just trying to share some of that and enlighten some people with it maybe but um just before we go we are still running the podcast giveaway which is the dum dum what's involved oh as in the prize yeah. or what you have prize. to do prize so you get a massive supplement bundle you get the my coach school beauty loops t-shirts clarity percent. bottle bands you get a year's free access on the my coach school and then also you'll have access to the app once it's launched and then also a gymshark voucher yes so to be in with a chance to win that all you need to do is leave a review a five-star review of the podcast if that is on itunes mm-hmm. how do you do that Apple Podcasts. So yeah, what you have to do, which is a little bit different, you ha- have to actually go to the search bar, type in the Not So Fit Couple Podcast, click on the Not So Fit Couple Podcast, scroll down, and then it's all there for you to write a review and leave a star or five. Five star. Yeah, and then also you can submit this on the YouTube channel. Mm-hmm. So if you go to the Not So Fit Couple YouTube channel, obviously this is only the second episode on any of the episodes through February. If you leave... um just a quick review on there what you thought of the podcast leave your instagram handle then you will also be in the prize draw to win that amazing comp yeah definitely so we hope you enjoyed this episode guys have a wonderful day or evening wherever you are in the world and we'll catch you in the next episode bye guys bye